Welcome to the seventh episode on the CDP4 video series, where I'm going to explain the concept of iterations. But before we do, we're going to connect to a server. So I hit the connect button on the home ribbon. I provide the name of the server, a username and a password, and I hit the OK button. So now I'm connected to a server. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the directory tab and show the models. Now, in one of the earlier episodes, I explained how to create a new model. And I also explained that a model has multiple study phases that it can go through. So um, it can be in a preparation phase, design phase, reporting phase, or it can actually be a completed study. One of the things that I did not mention at that time, which I will do now, is that depending on the phase you're in, you're allowed to do certain kinds of things with a model or not. And one of the things you cannot do while a model is in preparation phase is create new iterations. That is typically something you do while you are in the design session phase when you have a whole team working on a model. So that's the first thing I is, is that I'm going to do is I'm actually going to update this model and say, now we are in the study phase. Uh, at this point in time, we would be in a concurrent design facility or all working from home collectively on this one model with all the participants that uh, could potentially be there. Now, for this uh, video, there's only one participant, the administrator, which is represented by me, uh, and he has the following domains of expertise that he can uh, log in as. So the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new iteration. And the reason that I'm going to do that is because I'm really happy with the state of the design that I reached when I was creating all uh, my model. So what I want is I want to create a snapshot right now. And I do that by freezing iteration one and moving to iteration two. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to right mouse click on the iteration folder and I'm going to click on the create an iteration setup menu item. Um, some of these tabs I cannot change, but I can change the description and I'm going to call this iteration two. Doesn't really matter what you call it. And the source iteration was iteration one. Basically what I'm saying is that I first had iteration one and now I'm going to iteration two. So I hit the okay button and now you see that I have two iterations. So the next thing that I can do, I'm going to close this window, is I can open a model. So I go back to the Home tab, I open the model, and you see here that I have the demo model. I'm going to select an iteration, and here you can see that iteration one was frozen on today's date, right before six o'clock, um, and I can open that one, but I'm not allowed to change anything in that iteration. It's really a frozen state of my design, which I can go back to to inspect it. And for the more advanced users, I would even be able to create a new iteration based on that frozen iteration. So here you see what the design looked like. And what you will also see is that the menu items that allow me to uh, change things in this model are all disabled, which means I cannot do anything in this iteration except for looking at the data. Now, what I can also do is I can open up a second iteration. And the reason that I would want to do that is to be able to compare uh, iteration two versus iteration one, or keep track of what it was in the state of the design in iteration one while I'm working on iteration two. So here I select iteration two. I'm still going to represent uh, system engineering. I hit the select button and now I have while we're giving the server some time to think, I have my second iteration loaded and I can open that one up as well. So here you see that there's a new menu item added here, iteration two, and now I have both of them loaded at the same time. And here you will see that this iteration, all the menu items to change uh, the things in my model are active again. Mind you, I have iteration one in the header here and iteration two in the header here, so I'll always be able to distinguish where I'm at. So you can always see that I'm in model demonstration on this server. I am the administrator. I represent system engineering and I am in iteration two. So now I can go and change uh, again, the value of the mass of my battery. Um, 
as things go. Of course, they keep on going up. That's very typical. Let's say we have to provide more power, also be able to store more power. So I can change that here. Um, and of course, I can also change that here. Uh, not there, of course. So here you see that I've actually changed the value of my battery uh, mass parameter. I'm going to do the same thing for my reaction wheel. So I'm going to say, since the mass of my total spacecraft goes up, I need to uh, provide more uh, inertia with my reaction wheels or more momentum or torque. They have to become a bit bigger. So I'm actually saying now the mass is 12. So you see here that all these definitions are updated simultaneously uh, with um, the element definition that is updated. Um, so again, since I'm happy with these uh, values and I want the rest of the team to also find out about them, you saw here, I clicked on iteration two. Um, I'm going to publish all these values and now they have become available. And you can see that nothing's changed in iteration one. I have only changed iteration two, um, and I can keep on doing that, but I cannot change it here. I can only change it here. Thank you very much for watching, and I hope to see you next time. Bye.